Hi there guys, welcome back to the shop for Project Archie episode 46. Today, we're going to be playing with some fun parts. We're going to be playing with the J4 main shaft, the J4 timing hub. We'll also need four M4 by five set screws. You'll need one TRD1625, that's a bearing washer that should measure 0.126 inches thick, because why not mix Eng English and metric? We're cool like that. You'll need one NTA1625, which is a one inch ID needle roller bearing. You'll need one TRA1625 um, bearing washer that should measure 0 0.032 inches thick. And you'll need a bit of plucky attitude and self-confidence because by the time you're done with this, you're gonna have a J4 main shaft right here. It's gonna be cool. So let's put it all together. On your J4 main shaft, you'll notice right off the hop that it's asymmetrical. There's two holes down on this end and there's one hole down here. That's important. Everything we're gonna do happens down here at the middle hole. So this way you know which way things are supposed to point and how they're supposed to be aligned and all that jazz. So this will be easy. So the first thing you wanna do is secure your J4 timing hub, that's this part, to your J4 main shaft. Now the hub has a flat side and a milled inside. The milled inside points towards the single hole. Okay, so this goes on here at about here facing that way. Okay, so we're just gonna slip that right over. Now on your J4 timing hub, you'll notice there's four machined threaded holes. One of those, and it doesn't matter which one, has to line up right over top of that hole. It doesn't matter which, but one of the set screws is gonna need to seat right down into that hole. So at this point, we're gonna grab our four set screws and a two millimeter driver. And I'm gonna do, <laughs> okay, fine. So we can work ahead and you can actually get these started in here as long as they don't come out the other side, which is easy because they'll go all the way down. And just to prevent dropping these on the floor or any such foolishness, because that never happens, I'm going to thread all four of these just into this so that they don't fall out. Don't, don't go all the way through, just you, but you can thread it all the way in, into the body and they'll just hang out in there. And this saves dropping things on the floor. Just make sure they don't pass out into the inner circle. And also make sure not to put two down the same hole. Okay, so now we've got all that on there. Now that we've got that, oh, let's flip it right the way around. Now we've got the recessed side and we're lined up and I'm gonna take that right down past the first and shoot for the second. Now I don't have to be perfect because I can just bring this forward a little bit. So I'm going to I'm going to go off so I can bring it all the way down. Now I know I'm just touching the surface. Come back a quarter turn, line it up. And now I know I'm in the hole. Now I don't know if this is going to thread through. If it does, that's a rather impressive bit of machining to pull that off. Look at it from the other end. Yeah, that goes right on through. Wow. Good job, Mr. Annan. That's really impressive that he got both of those to line up. I'm gonna back it off a little bit because I don't wanna pass through to the inside, but I wanna, I wanna know that we're locked. So now I know this is indexed properly and I can tighten the other three down. I'm just gonna go all the way down plus you know, quarter turn, just snug. All 
I've got my torsion wrench here because this is a big long spring, this big bond house, I think it is. Yeah, it's a big bond house. This particular wrench I use is a number 15352. I love these things. And because it's so long, I can put that in and just give it an extra quarter turn and the whole thing will spring. So I get a consistent torque on there. So now I've got the J4 timing hub on the J4 main shaft and yours should look like this. You should have the recess side and the flat side. The flat side points towards the short end. The recess side points towards the long end. And everything should line up. You should have one of the uh, set screws going all the way through and engaging down into this as well. So this is, this is bonded together. So the next step is to get our big TRD 1625 bearing washer and drop that down over the long end and it'll just barely fit. You may have to wiggle a little bit, but it will fit. And now that's resting down in the cavity where we want it. Next up, grab your NTA1625 needle roller bearing and we're gonna drop that right over just like the other one. This one will just barely fit because it's a one inch shaft and a one inch bearing and it just don't force it. This stuff is really easy to bend and tweak out of shape. If you do that, you're gonna have a bad day. So it should just, it may be a little fussy, but take your time and just, just wiggle. If you're using anything more than fingertip pressure, you're gonna screw it up. So really take your time and be gentle putting these parts together. This isn't like a hammer at home fit. You're not putting wheel bearings on a Mack truck. This is, this is delicate. We're doing precision robotics here. Next up is the TRA1625. This is the thin one. And oh, I picked up a little bit of table schmoo there. Make sure they're clean because any bits of schmoo that you have in here are gonna get trapped in the roller bearing and you don't want that. So just, just gently. Now, if you've got them all together, something really cool happens. If you look at this laid down, now these are all firmly in there. This side's smooth. But this side, that assembly sits proud by just thousands of an inch. It's really thin, but it's perfect. And this whole assembly, if you set it flat on something, will spin just like that. And that is super cool. All right, so now we've got our entire assembly and we get to install it. With your turret housing up here and the long side forward, you can see we've got extra material up here. Here's the short side, here's the long side. On here, it orients like this, and this should make sure everything's clean, no schmoo. Just slide that right in there and just send it home gently. You may have to wiggle it. You should not need any hammer mojo. There's the first one, there's the second one, and we're all the way in. And we've cleaned out a little grease along the way. That's all right. But at this point, now this has the ability to spin on the roller bearings inside, the needle roller bearings that are in this block. And if there's force pushing this way, this, all the, the bearing that we just installed in those two washers acts as a thrust bearing in this direction. So we can have force pushing down here and that'll spin. And then inside on this and this axis, that's carried by those bearings. But the whole assembly spins round, baby, right round like a record, baby, round, round. And that is super cool. So we've made a new part. Thank you for hanging out. You have now learned a new thing. You've built a thing, you've accomplished a thing. And if you're following along at home and you're building an Anon AR3 robot, by all means, get in the comments, get down below in the links. There's Discord, you could be hanging out. I wanna see pictures of your robot. I wanna see your progress. I wanna see your videos. If you've got video of you building one of these robots, I will comment on your video and tell the world just how awesome you are. You guys have fun. Good luck, stay safe. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time.